Welcome to Bean and Bracket Factory and welcome to this video which is all about fitting an alternator to an Austin 7. Now you might be thinking why would I want to do that because Austin 7s have dynamos and if you're a purist and you've got an original Austin 7 then you probably won't want to do that. But in my case uh, I've got a single seater. Now on the single seater the dynamo sticks out the side of the car so it's often completely removed and anyway single seaters are, are nearly always racing cars so now mine is a racing car as well but uh, I want to be able to drive it on the road purely for testing purposes so I decided I was going to fit an alternator so this video is all about how I did it. Now over at my rather messy bench well it's clean enough it's got a few bits and bobs here obviously but it's clean enough so talking about this alternator conversion so this is the alternator it's off one of those ride-on tractors uh, Kubota I think off eBay at uh, 75 quid or something what's good about it is it's very small and it will fit quite nicely hopefully in the engine compartment this is a um, regulator no it's not a regulator it's a rectifier and I think it's a, reg a rec uh, regulator but it, this gives a uh, 12 volt uh, AC output you need to convert it to 12 volt DC so uh, these two wires give you the AC output and these two wires this gives you 12 volt DC uh, well hopefully up to 12 volt DC depends how fast this is spinning and this is your earth strap here so uh, this will take a V belt standard V belt uh, and this is a pulley um, this is the fan belt pulley that sits on the end of a camshaft so just here we've got an Austin camshaft goes on the end of there on a taper there's no key on it so I'm going to use this pulley albeit modified to drive the alternator now this pulley takes a wide belt so what I'm going to do is modify this pulley to take a V belt haven't entirely worked out how I'm going to do it but it basically means chopping off this using some thin thick plate welding the thick plate to it turning it up and uh, machining a sort of half the V in one side then having another plate that's sandwiched on the other side which has the other half of the V in the other side and maybe some spaces in between to get to the width of the V correct so that's the plan um, when I've made the pulley then I will know exactly where on the car this needs to this needs to space and I can make a bracket and it's going to mount on the housing which holds the originally held the, the dynamo and the distributor so but we'll get to that so I think the first things first is that we're going to start chopping up this this pulley this is this is a brand new pulley uh, it was off at eBay I think it was 16 quid which is an absolute bargain um, and I've made this little brass thing that slides over there so I can grip it in the in the in the lathe and it doesn't uh, knacker this surface so yeah think first things first I'm going to machine down this thing back at the bench again after a bit of quality or not that good quality lathe time so good news and the bad news the good news is this is now machined off um, it's got it's quite thick material that's quite good the bad news is that I went a bit too this is what got parted off I went a bit too quick on the parting and the whole thing got ripped out the chuck and made a right old mess of this boss I mean the irony was that I was trying to protect it and what I did was actually wreck it so I've got a couple of cho three choices one throw it away buy another one start again two stick it on anyway clean it up stick it on anyway and it, actually this is a sort of sealing surface anyway the third one which you're probably going to do is machine this down and put a steel sleeve over it uh, and a steel sleeve will, will work much better with um, a modern lip seal anyway so hey ho it is what it is so uh, the next step will be to get some thick alley I can't see it lying around anywhere thick alley plate weld it to that uh, and machine a machine uh, sort of a, a one side of a pulley on here it can be quite tricky welding it to here to make sure I don't destroy bits like this thin bit here so um, probably what I'm gonna have to do is to tack it on where it's quite thick machine quite a lot of it off so I'm not left with a great deal of metal 
and then then finish it off welding and then it'd be much easier to control the heat be less heat required if i've got less metal so um that's next get some metal and start to do some welding it's a few days later i'm in the garage it's raining outside you can probably hear it and this aluminium plate's turned up so what i'm going to do i'm going to weld this to the plate but first i'm going to trim it uh, and remove as much material as possible well not as possible as to make welding a, a bit easier so i'm going to chop these bits off chop those off bore a hole in the middle stick it in the lathe spin it round, and it's going to end up looking like this so i'm going to i'm going to clamp that to there and weld this on and the reason i've done this is that this is eight mil thick alley so welding this eight mil thick to this raw this significantly thinner pulley may be tricky um, because this is going to take a lot more heat to melt than that and i don't want this vaporizing before this even starts to melt so uh, i'm going to weld it closer to, to the edge because the nearer the edge i get the uh, the easier it is to melt because there's nowhere for the heat to dissipate to anyway so i'm going to clamp that and have a crack at welding that round and when that's welded i'm going to be able to put it in the in the lathe bore out this hole more and put a taper uh, a sort of chamfer on there which is going to be half of the v so let's weld that on let's see how that goes so back from welding and it went reasonably okay the problem is that this is a cast uh, cast aluminium and it would every now and then it would spit from impurities inside the cast aluminium and it would make these little inclusions here um, it's generally it's okay it could be a bit prettier i've actually put it in the lathe and just um turned it round it was only slightly out but it didn't really matter so now obviously on this this here we've got this this v shape so obviously i want to mirror the same v shape on this pulley so i'm now going to machine half of a v in the lathe and then the idea is that the other disc is the other half of the v and I can space them with a spacer or washers so I can get the, the correct width for the V. So that's the next thing. Stick it in the lathe and, and machine it down and try and get a V. It's going to go to probably about there, I'd say, uh, the depth of the V. And I'm going to machine this back to maybe, this is 8 mil, maybe take it back to a couple of millimetres just there. So, all right, let's do that now. Here we get to see a bit of machining in action. time on the lathe so now you can see we've got half half a pulley which is this basically the same same angle as that so the plan now is to drill six holes in here with equal spacing with a pitch diameter of 66 millimeters why 66 because i made it up so i'm going to i'm going to drill six holes in here and six holes in there and then i'm going to bolt that to there I'm going to repeat the cut it out, turn it down to the same diameter, and then I'm going to machine the uh, taper on it. And then when I flip it round, I should have my pulley. Um, so that is the plan. Let's see how that goes, shall we? So I'm just marking on six holes. It's quite easy to get six because it's just the radius, that's the radius. Then you mark any point on the circumference, you get the first point, the second point, the third point, the fourth point, the fifth point. So that's six in total. Um, so that's shade over 66, 66.5. 
I'm going to drill these now uh, and then I'm going to go to the other one and I'm going to drill and tap those ones so that I can bolt this one to it. Outer flange has now been uh, drilled and I put the centre hole in using the hole cutter. Uh, this inner line is pretty much where that is going to go. So the outer line, I'm basically going to chop, use a bandsaw and chop all this off uh, so that it's much quicker when I actually put it in the lathe. Uh, and of course I've still got to drill still got to drill six holes. Uh, I'm going to drill and tap these holes here. I'm using 3 16 BSF. So I'll drill these, I think, I think to four mil and tap them to 3 16 BSF and then I can bolt that to there. So uh, next thing is to chop down that thing. Edges of that one trimmed off, but a change of plan. I decided to actually machine it all up without bolting it to the other, uh, the other piece. Much makes much more sense. If, bolted the other piece it, re it runs the risk of damaging the, the spigot um, or the, the main boss on the other one so I've now got it to the same diameter I'm just going to put the, um, the the taper in which is the other half of the uh, of the pulley the outer face is now machined up that will go on there like that so that's what the pulley looks like um, it's going to have to be wider than that and the V angle might have to be flared slightly, depends on what I find when I get the belt. Uh, so the only step remaining now is to very, very carefully drill and tap six holes in here. Obviously if I don't do it accurately then it won't actually fit. And when, If and when I do put it on I can stick the whole thing in the lathe and take out a lot more of this material here. I don't, I don't need all this, this meat here, that's, that's superfluous. So uh, yeah, very carefully mark up and, and, and drill that now. I've now very carefully marked this up. Um, I had two attempts. This attempt was wrong. I got the radius about half a millimetre out, so I'd compounded over about three millimetres. So now when I set the compass to the radius um, and I go from there to there to there to there to there, I end up exactly back where I started. So. Hopefully, if I now drill and tap these, as long as I drill and tap them in the right place, everything should line up. Back at the bench and my, my patience paid off because I managed to drill the holes in exactly the right place and tap them and um, I've sandwiched this front plate on. So I've also stuck it in the lathe and I've taken out this hole a bit wider and machined both surfaces so you can't, you can't actually see the join. Not that it really matters. Uh, I will take out more material because it's still a little bit heavy. Um, so I think uh, for now I'm going to leave that as it is and I'm going to focus on the actual alternator because this has got to, I've got to make a bracket to fit it to the car um, or to fit it to the, um, the housing which holds the, um, the dynamo which I don't have and the distributor. So it's the time to get the, uh, the serial packets out and do um, a bit of CAD, a bit of computer aided design. Not computer, cardboard aided design. So let's get cracking with that next. Back at the bench and I've been playing around with some cardboard. So this is the the um, dynamo housing that it's all mounting to. Now this is an inspection cover that goes over the front of there. I'm actually going to mount it in the place of this cover. Now these are a couple of quarter inch, looks like uh, Whitworth BSW uh, tap, tapped holes. They're not really substantial enough, so I'm going to beef that up by basically bonding a piece of steel behind there. So I made this, um, these cardboard templates. This is the first one. It's going to kind of go on like that. And then I made a slightly improved one like that. And this is going to be a slot hole. And then I've ended up with that. So it's basically going to go on there like this. Now that's going to be a slot so the whole thing can pivot around there and then you can use that to tension the, 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 the belt. So these, these two are going to be wider apart, they're going to be the width of that apart, which means that the, using spacers you can space um, fore and aft the exact um, position of the alternator such that the belts line up correctly. So there's a bit of a uh, bit of slack in the system. It means if I do a better pulley, I machined out one solid lump, then then I can compensate for any differences. So on the strength of that design, I've offered it up to the car. Uh, it, it seems to work quite nicely. 
I've I've cut uh, not cut these out yet, but I've marked these out in the standard way. It's three millimeter plate, masking tape, draw around it, cut it out with the scalpel. Now it's off to the bandsaw um, um, to cut all of this out and cut these parts out. I'll basically drill these, uh, make sure they're identical, and then all the final fettling I can do with them bolted together so that I know that everything's going to be completely square. So let's cut these out now. bandsaw suddenly jammed and that is why yikes so after lots of bandsawing and filing and fettling I've made these two they're actually bolted well they're not bolted together but they're held together uh, and I've been filing them so that they're basically the same shape uh, just so it's nice and neat a bit more fettling to do and of course I need to cut this into a radial slot so that the, the uh, alternator can swing around. But, so I'll, I'll do a bit more filing and fettling, cut the slot, and then I'll, I'll offer it up to the, um, to the car and see how it's looking. Done a bit more fettling and they're looking quite good. So I've stuck them on the alternator and I can now offer it up to the car. It's going to sit pretty much like that. Uh, I need to make up a mounting plate and some little um, strengthening plates for either side of the bracket so um, I think on the strength of that I will crack on it's looking quite good it, it's gonna it should line up quite nicely my hands in the way so you can't really see so yeah I think I'll uh, crack on with the bracket and make the, the the bottom plate and the strengthening plates cut the the radial slot and tack it together Back on my bench again now, after lots of filing and fettling and some welding, we now have the bracket. Now you will have noticed uh, in the video about welding, when I was welding, uh, these, these were just spacers that I had in there uh, to hold everything in place while I was welding it up, that's all. Um, took a long time because I had problems with my um, bandsaw. But actually, that turned out to be quite fortuitous. The, what happened is on the bandsaw, the pulley started to slip. Uh, and when I was playing around with it, I realised the bandsaw has this belt. I'm thinking, it's going to be about right size, this belt. Um, and it meant I could start to play around with my pulley again. Uh, so what I've done is, here's my pulley. I've machined off much more material. And now my um, changed the angle slightly. And now my belt fits in my pulley perfectly um, and it also fits around this perfectly so um, I think the next step is to offer it all up to the car and uh, see if it all seems to fit so let's, let's bolt it together oh one more thing I made these made these little spaces so these spaces go in here to space out the uh, the alternator anyway without further ado let's bolt it to the car so there it is fitted to the car and by sheer fluke the belt of my bandsaw fits perfectly which means I can now order a new one or two uh, for the saw or even for the car. I put this one back on the saw. Um, so I'm quite pleased with that. Obviously I need to need to run it up and make sure it, it seems to, not seems, make sure it does actually work and it spins around and nothing you know nothing is out of kilter and it gives me 12 volts um but then i've still got a few jobs to do um and i'm going to paint all the brackets i'm going to get some cap screws and countersink them in there um fit six of them of course i also this housing here i also need to reinforce the housing i'm probably going to get some cap uh, bsw cap bolts that go all the way through to something steel on the back of the housing um but that's looking pretty good 
So I think what I'll do now is I'll, I'll put the exhaust back on and start her up and uh, wire it up and, and see what sort of output we're getting. Right, now fitted to the car. It's all gone on quite nicely and I've done this temporary uh, sort of hacky wiring. So I've hooked it up to the, to the battery and I'm going to check the voltage with this meter. Currently saying 12.4 volts, not running. So now I'm going to start the engine. So I was actually expecting slightly more voltage coming out of it, but it's 12 volts. Uh, the, it, the voltage goes up when you rub it, so seems plenty, seems fine. So uh, on the strength of that, this is all pretty good. Uh, I'm now going to take it all off again, and I'm going to do all the fettling that I talked about. I'm going to paint the bracket. I'm going to beef up this, this casing. I'm going to countersink the bolts on here various different things and we also need to wire it up properly uh, I haven't quite decided how I'm going to do that I'm probably going to run the earth to the engine block and then run the positive round to the starter motor that's what my current thinking is anyway uh, time to get cracking with that back at the bench again and you'll notice a little bit tidier this time and a final run through of the parts uh, that I'm about to bolt to the car. So this is the pulley. The pulley is connected to the engine and I have um, machined out these holes, countersunk these Allen bolts, taken off a bit more on the inside, made it, made it a little bit lighter. That's the, the felt seal. So that's fine. So that is connected to the belt. The pulley is connected to the belt. The belt is an A22, which means it's 22 inches long. The belt is connected to the alternator. The alternator hasn't changed. Um, I was going to paint it, change my mind. I might peel this off. I don't really like barcodes on my pre-war car. The alternator is connected to two things. It's connected to the bracket. The bracket has now been painted and I've got some bolts, trimmed them to the right length. I've, I've added a little bit of lightness there in the shape of a hole. So that's pretty much done. That is belt bolted to the housing. Now the housing, um, I've put these, these um, reinforcement plates and used this sort of two part epoxy metal glue stuff. Uh, and uh, it's, these are steel inserts and I've uh, drilled and tapped them to one quarter inch BSW, that's a Whitworth. Um, while I was at it, this one is just threaded. Uh, I've, I've kept the, the threads on the um, on the on the body. Kept these threads, but this one was actually had been drilled quite a long way off center. So the whole thing was like this. So I kind of filed it, moved it sideways, and drilled it. Now the reason I've added these um, these uh, reinforcements is because this aluminium is like cheese, so a soft cheese. So I cut that off. And my saw virtually fell through. You know, um, don't need that. Obviously, that's the that's the um, the mounting for a standard fan. So that's now ready to bolt on. It's, it, it's another one. It's not the one that's on the car, so I've got to swap it out. Um, what else? Uh, the alternator is also connected to the um, the rectifier and regulator. It's a rectifier and regulator on one. I've actually using a different one. The one I, I use as the, as the kind of prototype was this one. This is a four wire, this is a six wire. This is, gives me extra t uh, two wires which gives me effectively a, a charging light um, which will be quite in, uh, useful to know that it's working. So that represents all of the parts. So uh, time to 
stick it on the car for the final time, got to replace that of course, stick it on the car and wire it all up. And finally it's all now on the car. Pulleys on, brackets on, alternators on, the uh, rectifier regulator I've mounted on a little bracket underneath there so it's tucked away out of sight. Um, if I want to take the alternator off all I've got to do is, I'll probably leave, leave that on just to unplug these two wires. It's all hooked up into the loom. Well I say all of it, not quite. Uh, just here is a little LED uh, and I said earlier it's a charging light. It's not. It's the light which comes on when it's not charging so uh, when you switch the ignition on the red LED which will be very small and discreet will show and then when you start the engine the LED should go out uh, to signify it's charging. So uh, all that remains now is one quick test and that's about the size of it. So just doing a final test now, uh, the ignition switched off and the voltage is 12.3. Uh, if I switch the ignition on then uh, the voltage will drop as it uh, charges the coil and this LED should come on. It's just there. So ignition goes on. Okay, so voltage is now dropping. LED is on and now when I start the car the LED should go off and the voltage should go up to sort of 12 volts at least I hope let's see So there you have it, that's how I did it. Um, so hopefully you found that of interest uh, and if you're following my videos all about my winter rebuild, don't worry, the saga continues. Uh, I'm getting there and I do plan to take the girl for a, a good solid drive in the very near future. So uh, if you've not subscribed, subscribed already, leave a comment if you want to. Thanks for watching.